Welcome, thank you for your interest, participation for developing and reviewing essentialized examples. Along with the link to this webinar, you should have received a copy of an essentialized example and a copy of this PowerPoint. We will be referring to the essentialized example throughout this short informational webinar. This work is based on behalf of the Bureau of Special Ed, led through the Pennsylvania Training and Technical Assistance Network. Patton is located at three regional offices across the state. Our goal is to support the capacity of local educational agencies to serve students who receive special education services. The Pennsylvania Department of Education has a commitment to the least restrictive environment. To Today, we will be discussing resources that support student learning and access to the state standards. As a result of this webinar, we will talk about the purpose of the essentialized examples and the formation of a group of teachers, or we call teacher work group, to design them. We will also identify the responsibilities of members of this teacher work group. We will identify the time commitment for the application process and the time commitment for participation with this work if you would apply and then be accepted. And we will also outline the components of the application process. The essentialized examples are, are a tool to support instruction from several perspectives. The academic nature of the alternate eligible content has been fairly new for many teachers of students eligible for the PASA or students with significant cognitive disabilities. So the essentialized examples are intended to bring understanding of the content and ideas to consider when determining how to instruct students towards learning of the alternate eligible content. So let's break this down a little further. So the essentialized examples support teacher understanding. So within math, consider the concept of slope or the concept of translation, reflection, and rotation. Or within English language arts reading, what does it mean to show how two elements of a story, drama, or poem interact? What is a story element? Essentialized examples will assist the teacher to better understand the content and what students should know and be able to do. Essentialized examples also provide three different examples or samples of what this could look like at distinct le different levels of complexity. We know there could be much more than three options because we know students with significant cognitive disabilities have varying ability levels, but three distinct ideas of what students should know and be able to do can support teacher application for a variety of student abilities. Essentialized examples provide suggested materials, guidance on how to support the materials, and they can also be used as a springboard for teachers to think about how to use their own materials, resources, approaches, things that may be more familiar to a student and tap into background knowledge that their students may have. So let's take a look at an essentialized example. We included this in the initial uh, email that we sent out and we also included it in the email we sent out with the link to this webinar. So if you look in an essentialized example, we're going to look at the three different levels of complexity. You can see the alternate eligible content or the multiple single digit, multiply single digit whole numbers. And then it breaks it into what students need to know, do, and a context. And it also provides some definition notes. Um, we also have an intense statement or a broader statement that's going to help us think about what this content could look like at three different levels of complexity. And it gives us some parameters that we need to consider. So here you see the most complex level and you see a content target. Every example will have one. And you will see some teacher guidance notes and then you will see a sample. At a mid-complex level, you're going to see that the complexity has been reduced a little bit. Um, even though we're still using manipulatives, it's set up differently instead of an array. We're going to have the students consider um, uh, repeated addition. And um, 
in this particular example, the teacher has given the teacher two ways to think about setting this problem up. And at the least complex level, again, you have a content target. It's all going to that same piece of content to multiply single digit uh, uh, numbers. And we are looking at different ways to present it. So the students are all doing that, but in different ways. And in this way, um, the, the teacher has then um, given two different examples using apples and bananas for students to demonstrate understanding. Again, it is a way that we're thinking about what it will look like when the student is able to do this. This is not the instruction. You're not developing lesson plans or unit plans. The instruction would be what's between the content target and this example. This example would be a way to think about how your students could show that and how you could build the instruction towards that showing. As a member of the teacher work group, when you develop examples, you would be assigned all the information um, that's at the top of this page. You would not have to put all, any of that into an example, but we would provide you all of the information at the top of the document. And then you would just be completing the bottom, the bottom part and coming up with the three different examples. Again, this provides teachers three options to consider. It is not the be all end all. We recognize that students come at us with so many different levels and abilities, but it would be impossible to write that many examples. So if we looked at three in three different buckets um, and with three distinct differences that we could then um, at least at the, uh, get teachers to start thinking about different ways this could best meet their students' needs. So the purpose of the teacher work group is really to um, develop and review examples of each piece of alternate eligible content for math, reading, writing, and science. So you would be, again, assigned a piece of content and be responsible for adding the examples and um, showing it at different levels of complexity. So the roles and responsibilities of the teacher work group, you would be a developer and a reviewer. You would need the skills to do both roles. Um, we're just not bringing people in to just review. We're not just bringing people in to develop. We are asking everyone to be proficient at both sides. Um, so when we think about a developer, you would use the assigned AEC and a template, and you would create an original centralized example. And you can do it within your own preferred grade band. You can let us know um, that you may be more, more familiar, more comfortable in a 3-4 kind of grade band. Um, so we won't be assigning you grade 11 or grade 8. Um, you can be a reviewer. Um, as a reviewer, you also get that same flexibility to review within a preferred grade band. But as a reviewer, we provide you a rubric with which to rate the quality and consistency of the developed examples um, and provide feedback um, and uh, help in case there need to be any revisions. Work is to be completed within your schedule. We will we give fairly generous timelines and we can vary within your schedule but we do provide timelines so if we know you let us know you're available from one date to another we'll ask you to have, make sure the work is done within that time frame. So let's look at these roles a little closer. So the developer will develop an example from an assigned piece of alternate eligible content. So you're gonna write content targets at three different levels of complexity and you can refer back to the example that was shared with you um, and think about you know, the different components of that example. So as a developer, that person also wrote in some teacher guidance, uh, some supports, and then they, uh, ways the student can demonstrate success, they added graphics and text. And then once you get that done, you submit it for review. And then following the review, it will probably come back to you. Um, and if, if needed, you would need to make some revisions and then it would hopefully be on the path for being published.
So reviewers, again, you need the skills to do both roles. Your review is completed using a rubric that's specific to the relevant content area. So there's a rubric in math, a rubric in ELA writing, a, a rubric in ELA reading, and a rubric for science. And so you would um, wor work through the rubric with the example. And then a critical piece is for you to offer feedback throughout uh, that process. So sometimes your feedback is given as a suggested change and sometimes it's given as a mandatory change and you actually are expected to give ideas of how to make the changes. Once again you would be reviewing within your preferred grade or grade band. Once you complete this independent review you are required to meet virtually with a, another group member who's also been assigned the same document. So each doc, completed document has two reviewers. And so you will meet together and come to consensus with your reviews and suggestions. And if needed, you can contact the developer to ensure that you're communicating clearly. Um, the feedback is intended to be comprehensive, so your review is not just a checklist. And it doesn't, it's not very short to complete, so it does take a little bit of time. So once the developer makes this, the changes as, as deemed necessary by the reviewers, um, as a reviewer, you'll review it again to make sure that those mandatory revisions were addressed and that the example still meets the qualifications and then it can be moved forward to be published. So additional responsibilities of the teacher work group, we have gotten a lot of questions in regard to this, but as part of the application process, you'll be asked to attend an in-person two-day training. You'll be completing a poll to give us some ideas of dates that may work for you or uh, date frames in, uh, we will then schedule something in the October, November timeframe. So we will give you information at the end of this presentation of where to indicate your interest with participation and to complete our short survey about that two-day training preference. And training dates will be announced following completion of the survey by all interested participants. Okay. That would be part one of the application process. There will also be an application which we'll look at in the next slide. But if you are accepted, another training commitment that we do ask participants to make is that there will be some various brief webinars throughout the year um, and there could be an opportunity to participate in some virtual coaching sessions. So as you're working on these um, uh, and you need additional support with, say, writing content targets, we would set up a time that is mutually agreeable and we will uh, give you some coaching and some support with some of that along the way. So the application process is really kind of two well, three steps. We think about step one, attending a two-day training. So after the training, throughout the training, you're going to learn how to complete the rubrics. We're going to do lots of practice. And then you will have a competency-based checkout with the ELA and math rubrics. That's kind of step one. Step two, which will be to develop and submit one math and one ELA example. And we'll work with you in that two-day training to get you ready to be able to do that and even support you through some of that while you are with us. So that would have to be done and submitted to us. Um, and of course that again would be within your preferred grade range. We're not going to assign you something in third grade if you're a high school uh, teacher or seeking you know eighth grade or eleventh grade content. And step three which is really part of step two is there's an application that you submit at the same time that you submit your math and ELA example. So the application isn't extensive, it collects some demographics, it's going to ask you that your you know something of a history of your educational experiences, you know type of kids that you have may have taught along the the way. So successful candidate. So if you're wondering am I someone that would be a candidate for this kind of work. Well, we're looking for teachers 
who are working with students who are eligible for the PASA. So these are kids who are traditionally identified as having a significant cognitive disability. We are interested, we want teachers who are interested in exploring unique ways to create the content examples for this population. We know there are kids with varying abilities out there and teachers um, are interested in seeing different ways to do the same content. So we're also looking for teachers who are interested in developing their own skill set. One of the biggest uh, uh, piece of feedback we have received from our current participants, we currently have teachers in the teacher work group who have been doing this work uh, since uh, last spring. And they've commented on how much they have learned as a result of their participation and that the professional development that they've gotten around the alternate eligible content and understanding it has been incredible, not just from doing the work, but in all the conversation with their colleagues from across the state. We're also looking for teachers who are interested in an opportunity to network with other teachers and to collaborate. So you're not going to necessarily be assigned to someone who may be within your own geographical area, which is kind of um, fun, that you get to talk to a teacher maybe who's somewhere on the other side of the state or way north of you or way south of you, um, and um, you have an opportunity to talk and collaborate with them and develop some really meaningful relationships. So another question we're getting is about this teacher work group reimbursement. So for this work, successful applicants are provided a contract. Um, we pay for the review process $25, and for each published example, you would get $50. Uh, work is scheduled around your schedule and availability, and work is accumulated, and we pay it out on a bi-monthly basis. So the work that you do within a two-month or eight-week period is then processed, and then you will re be receiving a check for that work. So if you are interested, or if you know someone who is interested, um, if, if following this webinar and so the information about the teacher work group and the commitment that we're looking for, and you hear this and you are still seriously interested with participation, please use this link um, to go to a survey that will indicate your interest and it will also indicate your preference for training um, and training dates. Um, today's presentation was sent through a listserv, but if you know someone who is interested, um, one of, a colleague in your, your building or a colleague in your district or um, in your IU who might be interested, please share this information and encourage them to let us know of their interest. You can share the Survey Monkey, you can share this link to this webinar, and we would greatly um, uh, appreciate that. And then finally, if you have questions, something we didn't cover, something that you still um, are thinking about and you didn't hear the answer in this webinar, please feel free to either contact the teacher work group. We work out of a, a, a Gmail or a Google Drive at teachersaec at gmail.com. And then for very specific questions, you can feel free to contact myself, Sharon Leonard at patent.net, Linda Lupp at patent.net, or Audrey Kappel at the addresses um, indicated on this slide. So thank you very much. Um, we greatly... Uh, appreciate your time and your interest in this work and look forward to hearing from all of you um, or as many of you as, as are still very much interested in helping uh, get the information out about alternate eligible content for teachers across Pennsylvania.